12 seems to be the age when kids started putting the heat on their parents on the truth behind Santa. I was certainly no exception to this rule. How were Santa's elves able to make that video game I wanted in their workshop? I thought Nintendo owned Mario. Or how about the infamous visiting every house in one night? Question. Did the jolly old man had some kind of extending device? Or perhaps the most obvious question of all, how could he have lived for this so long? A lot of people say trains appearances who take his place every few decades. Others claim that he's just immortal. As for everything else, magic seems to be the un universal lie everyone had agreed on. Whatever the case is, I went on to the conclusion that it was just my parents doing. Of course they denied in the claim of ignorance when I confronted them, but it wasn't enough to dissuade my beliefs. So, one Christmas Eve when I couldn't sleep, all these questions dance among my dreams of sugar cereals and new games. I decided to investigate the noises coming from my living room. This time, surely, I would catch my mom or dad in the act of stowing presents under the tree, at least when they let me in on in the truth. But as I entered the living room, I saw a man before me that I didn't recognize. He was dressed in red and white and it was slightly overweight body, but he wore a stringy fate, fake weird we, white beard. His hair, or what remained of it, was grained around the edges of the classic Santa hat and his eyes were wide with fright as he dropped the present under the tree. Being intrigued, youth I was, I came down to two of the conclusions. This either was a home invader stealing my family's gifts, or if this was the real Santa. I opened my mouth to scream, but the man rushed over towards me and covered my mouth. Shh, he said, putting a finger to his mouth, trying to smile as tears began to roll down my cheeks. I was petrified of this man. Then slowly he took back his hand and extended towards me. It's all right there, little one. You know who I am, right? I nodded, trembling, not shaking his hand back. The trembling man nodded as well, then grabbed an empty sack lying on the floor, then gestured to the tree. Look, see, I bring gifts. Now run along to bed, or I may have to put you on the naughty list. He started drifting towards deeper, hearty voice stereotypically associated with Kris Kringle. But I wasn't fooled. Regardless, I wiped my tears and began to step back from the living room, trying to create some distance between me and the stranger. The man simply watched, wiped his brow, and proceeded to approach the green flames erupted from the chimney, and the man fell back to the floor. I couldn't see his face, but I am certain it was a twisted in fear like my own. A massive bony hand had sprung from the tree, of the fire, and then the arm that followed draped draggily fur, then another arm, and then the skull of some kind of creature, with large two horns followed. Nearly as large as the fireplace itself, the bones popped and snapped as it slammed its hands on the floor. The entire monster engulfed in the flame, yet it did not seem to burn anything in the house. Eddie, the monster declared, speaking to what I guessed to be the man on the floor. No, no, Eddie shouted back. I did my part, see? Ten thousand houses? Just like you asked, right? Ten thousands. I did my part. And you allowed a human child to see you. You know the rules. L -l Look, I I've learned my lesson. I'm sorry. I made a mistake. Just let me go. Please, I deliver all the... Let you go? Did you see that woman go, Eddie? I didn't seem to recall you letting her go. This was your second chance, and you've wasted it. What are you going to do? Eddie whispered. I couldn't make out this quaking figure being overshadowed by the creature in the fireplace. The next sound it liked to be a, was a crunch, and a soft binging of its napping finish. I jumped at the sound of the repeat a few times, finally getting out my shaky breath. I prayed on my head that it wasn't as I fought, though. But when that creature reared its head towards me, I saw the red and white pants dangling from its mouth as it chewed on Eddie's, Eddie's corpse. Then it watched it slurp down his legs like strands of spaghetti. I covered my eyes and tried to tell myself that it wasn't real. It wasn't real. And after a quite a minute, I peeked through between my fingers to see the monster staring back at me at the fireplace. 
The peat, the pace of my breathing grew quicker and sharper, and my eyes unable to escape the grasp of those empty eye sockets. Now run aloft along to bed, back to bed, little one, or else I might put you on the naughty list. My legs finally found the strength to move, and I sprinted from my parents' room, diving into the sheets with them. There wasn't a trace of the events from the night before when my family went down to the tree the next morning. There was even a little note next to them, empty glass and a half-eaten cookie on the table. Have a Merry Christmas, as Santa Claus. As much as I tried to take in the warm, comforting atmosphere that came every Christmas day, I couldn't stop watching the fireplace. Terrified that little monster would return. At least now, I know the truth about Santa Claus.